One part of a famous Hollywood family, Alec Baldwin was born in Amityville, New York. Yep, the same place as the central town in the Amityville horror. However, Baldwin's life has been a little less creepy. Probably the most horrifying moment in his career was when he was Razzie nominated for Worst Supporting Actor in The Cat in the Hat. The thing is, in the same year, he was Oscar nominated for Best Supporting Role in The Cooler. From a young age, Baldwin had a great fascination for movie heroes. Marlon Brando I thought was very heroic and uh... All of the actors that I really loved, Al Pacino I love, and old movie stars as well, you know, Henry Fonda and Gregory Peck and Gary Cooper and people like that, James Stewart. Heroism to me was always something that I could never do. You know, I always really admired men who could do things I could never do, which is why I really admired sports figures. Baldwin studied acting at the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute, kicking off his career in the early 80s with the soap series The Doctors and Knott's Landing. Early on, he built an impressive resume. He branched out into Broadway with productions like A Streetcar Named Desire and scored himself a role in the hit movie Beetlejuice. For Baldwin, a project with a strong message is very appealing. I've done movies before where I felt that the purpose of the movie was to show people what life should be. And not perhaps it not, it's not necessarily that way, but it should be that way. And I think that that's a responsibility that uh, any kind of art, for lack of a better word, um, has, is to show things that are truthful or are beautiful you know, or both. Baldwin's big break presented itself with his performance as Jack Ryan in The Hunt for Red October. Then, in 1996, he took on a biographical role in Ghosts of Mississippi. I've played parts that are a lot uh, noisier and more vulgar and more... Uh, um, uh, and more uh, crazy, and that, uh, and a lot of people f view that as that they confuse that with intensity. I think, but uh, I think this is certainly the most important movie I've ever done. In 1990, People magazine proclaimed Alec Baldwin as one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. But if you ask him, he doesn't get his roles because of his looks. He's since gone on to direct his first movie, something he never thought would be possible at the beginning of his career. I think that people have to be able to tell a story with a camera. And uh, I don't know anything about that, you know what I mean? I, people always say to me, do you want to direct a film? And I say no, because I don't know anything about movie cameras and, uh, and how you would tell a story with a movie camera the most effectively, you know? And great, to, and I've been very lucky, it's interesting you say that, because in movies I've done, I've always been very lucky because I've worked with some of the greatest photographers in the history of the movies. I've worked with Gordon Willis, and I've worked with Juan Ruiz Anchia, and I've worked with uh, uh, Don Peterman. I've worked with these great photographers, you know. Baldwin has worked with some of the biggest names in Hollywood. He starred alongside Leonardo DiCaprio and Jack Nicholson, and has worked with Oscar-winning director Martin Scorsese. To come onto the set of a film where on an acting level, you have that challenge to meet that person's expectations, who is this legendary director. To come on the set of a film and work with someone where you probably have no real hope of delivering what this guy wants because his, his standards are so high, that's kind of uh, uh, thrilling in a way. To come to work with Marty every day, uh, I'm exhausted at the end of every day because you really feel responsible to give everything you have all day long, every day. Thank God I only have a small role in this movie. Alec Baldwin is the oldest of four famous brothers. Daniel, Stephen and William Baldwin all work in the movie business too. There was competition when we were younger, whenever we came in direct conflict with one another in, in a whole host of different areas, uh, athletically or academically or with the family or friends or with women or something like that, you know. There was, but it never really got too serious. Um, I think that it was translated in a positive way. I think it was more of a, it, it, it uh, created an environment, the competition created an environment that um, motivated us. He calls me and he says, um, hey, it's, this is what I get on my answering machine. Uh, hi, it's Alec calling. Um, I saw another one of your films and you exposed your ass again. Uh, I, I think you should stop doing that. Call me.
1991, Alec Baldwin met actress Kim Basinger on the set of The Marrying Man. In 1992, they wed, then went on to work with each other again in The Getaway. They also appeared together on Saturday Night Live, a show Baldwin's hosted more than a dozen times. But when it came to making movies together, they kept it on a business level. No, share a trailer with him? You are kidding! Oh, please don't ever wish that on me. <laughs> no, we had separate trailers at least, but, um, you know, we'd have lunch together. And, you know, but on the set, we were, you know, between action and cut, we were Doc, Doc and Carol. That's it. Right. Total professionals, you know. Separate oh. relationships with the director, separate relationships with everyone, which made communication very clear. No, I never thought of that going in. I never factored into it that people, if they watched an explicit love scene between two people who were together, that they would think that they were looking at a home movie, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't, I never thought about that. I just know that, uh, uh, to me, it's always just two actors. Uh, I think that's the problem, by the way, with people becoming so, so, such celebrities and being so public, is that people are so aware of uh, actors and their lives and uh, exposed to them that they then see them, whereas maybe 40 or 50 years ago, uh, actors were just actors. From the start, their relationship generated sparks, earning them a reputation as one of Hollywood's power couples. Then, in 1995, their daughter, Ireland, was born. More rocks, more rubber animals. Oh, that's right, more horses. We have 10,000 rubber animals and they're different types of rocks. I'm becoming a geology major in my own living room. Perhaps it's due to being a father that Alec has lent his voice to several kids' movies, including SpongeBob SquarePants the movie, Cats and Dogs, and Madagascar 2. He even offered to lend his voice to parody himself in Team America, but was turned down by the film's producers. It's clear that Alec Baldwin has a sense of humour. That guy uh, inspires me to come in. Uh, he's got ideas, I've got ideas, and when we get together, um, you know, even people on the set say, you know, you really feel like there's a, there's a connection between these two. Oh, God, I feel so old. I remember when I used to bring Rumor Willis a juice box on the set of the movie. Thank you. Um... Alec Baldwin hasn't always had the easiest time bringing up his daughter. Since his divorce to Kim Basinger in 2002, he's been battling for custody rights. Then in 2007, he left a voicemail for his then 11-year-old daughter berating her. It got leaked to the press, and he then went on David Letterman, joking about how he could understand why native tribes would throw their teenage girls into volcanoes. But Baldwin also has a compassionate side. A strict vegetarian, he supports PETA, an organisation dedicated to the ethical treatment of animals. It was my ex-wife that introduced me to them and had worked with them. And I'd always been pretty sympathetic to the cause of animals, but uh, had never met a group of people who could articulate the issue and the, and the legislative agenda as well as, as uh, effectively as they could. So, I mean, once I met them, it was a, a chance to work with a group of people who, who support what they do. My passion for vegetarianism even got me to marry my ex-wife. She was the one that introduced me to vegetarianism. Yeah, she was the one that got me to do that. She was with her. She was the one who, uh, yeah. And, he, and then after I was divorced from my ex-wife, my friends would say, you're not with her anymore, have a burger. They really would. Yeah. After so many successful turns hosting Saturday Night Live, audiences wondered why Baldwin hadn't turned his hand to comedy. So it was no surprise when he joined the successful comedy 30 Rock. Oh, that's sweet. Alec, Alec is one of the, in my, in my book, top five best, greatest actors ever. In my book, Alec Baldwin. In 2009, the show received 22 Emmy nominations and won three Golden Globes. And the, and the Golden Globes go goes too. Go Alec Baldwin, 30 Rock. Alec won his second Golden Globe for Best Supporting Role in 30 Rock. In his speech, he presented himself as a true family man, even though he'd already divorced actress Kim Basinger. And I have three people I want to thank. My mom was recovering from hip surgery. 
my niece Jessica, who's having a baby, and my love to my daughter Ireland, who makes me laugh when I'm home. A mark of his rising popularity, Baldwin was invited to co-host the 2010 Academy Awards with fellow actor Steve Martin. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, that sounds like it'll be funny. <laughs> that sounds like it'll be a good team. Thank you all very much. What a pleasure. Thank you. With over 30 years in the business, Alec Baldwin's a star of TV, theatre and film. His unique voice has been used in countless animation. He's appeared on Saturday Night Live more than any other guest host. Then 30 Rock came along and gave his career a new shot in the arm. It won him brand new fans and a new wave of stardom. And I think we can rest assured that whether it's in front of the camera, behind the camera or giving interviews, we're going to hear a lot more from Alec Baldwin. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.